And you went driving down the road in your moving van truck. So today we're here with Marnie B, art by Marnie B. Um, and you paint seashells. I do. Yeah, it's an awesome, um, awesome idea. I know you have a lot of variety of a bunch of different shells and everything. Um, Thank you. What, how'd you get into it? So, hi everybody. I, um, my story is definitely different. I never was like, oh, let me paint seashells and make this a business and start doing this all the time. I, I've been painting for over 20 years. So okay. I went to um, high school for painting and art and then I went to college for fine art. And, um, you know, through the years and just getting married, having family, everything like that, art took a back seat. So I hadn't been painting for a long time. I would say probably like seven years or so. And um, about a year and a half ago, my oldest brother, who was an avid surfer on Long Island, so he surfed a lot in Long Beach and Rockaway, Tobey, um, Gilgo, he just traveled all over surfing. He was... He was surfing on a Wednesday and then by Friday he didn't feel good and he ended up going to the doctor and it turned out that it was uh, stage four cancer. So it was wow. just like very sudden and he, he battled that for less than two months before he passed away. So wow. yeah, that was back in May, so two Mays ago. And with that, I, and that was a crazy time too. So. There was a lot going on, and I have two kids. I live here in Smithtown. Um, my husband works um, as a nurse in the hospital, and we were dealing with just sudden loss. And so with that, I found myself drawing and painting just with my grief. Yeah. I had to, like, focus on something, and my brain only knew to do one thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I started just sketching a little bit and painting, and... Over that summer, I was at the beach a lot. So I'm a beach girl, I was always a beach girl. And we did a lot of memorials. We did a paddle out, a Hawaiian tradition where all the surfers go out and circle up um, for my brother Mark. And throughout that month or so, my house just filled up with seashells between the kids picking up shells. And I've never walked past a good shell, even since I was little. And so we had shells everywhere and I was making like little jars with sand for everybody, like memory jars. And in September, I had my friend, my friend's birthday and I was like, you know what? I want to make her something. I had been sketching a little bit and drawing just for myself. And I was like, I'm going to make her something for her birthday. And I got her a necklace and I just set it aside and it it was in my kitchen and I had all these shells that I had just washed for the girls and me to do something with. And I was like, oh, let me make her something on this shell and she could put her necklace in it. Right. And, uh, and she loved it. And then a coworker, I was working, um, in psychiatric hospital at the time. So I ended up, I went to school for art, but then I got my master's in social work. So I was a therapist for many years I was working full time in the hospital and a coworker saw and she was like, oh, I love this idea. Can you make me one? I want to gift it to my sister-in-law. So I was like, sure, I'll make you one. And um, that turned into, you know, some friends in Florida seeing it and wanting and my cousin wanting one. And in just the matter of about two months, I was painting hundreds and hundreds of shells. I that was, request. Yeah. Like yeah. people wanted uh, strangers. Painted, yeah. People saw. You were just posting on Instagram and. Well, yeah. So then I started a page on Instagram because I didn't, yeah. you know, people were posting and tagging and uh, it started to just become this whole thing that I never. It's really, <laughs> it's really, um, it's really funny that out of a tragic situation, something so beautiful could happen, like a beautiful inspiration could happen out of a, yeah. a situation that pushed you back into your real um, calling, what you really should be doing. Yeah, and you know, 
that's I talk about it all the time is people say wow you're you're a full-time artist you know I'm fast forward I ended up quitting my day job in April so this became so big and it it's nothing that I could have ever imagined so people are like oh you're you're living your dream and I'm like no this was never a dream it was it was something that I couldn't even fathom in my head and so with every shell, I mean, I go where Mark surfed. So that's part of my process is um, I specifically like to be at the beach where he was so often. And the shells, sometimes there's shells and sometimes there's garbage, you know. And I got really active in doing um, cleanups with the crew out in Long Beach. And, and whenever I'm at the beach, I bring a bag for shells and I bring a bag for garbage. I get try to just do something for okay. the beach. Um, yeah, that's great. And so Mother Nature really is in charge. And... Yeah, it, it's it's something beautiful that came out of something absolutely tragic that I would trade back in a second, you know, to have my brother, but I could never do that. And so I'm able to honor him in a way that I could, couldn't have imagined honoring him. Every single piece that somebody, you know, has in their home, in their office, right. in an art gallery is from the beaches that him and his friends, you know, rode waves. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of people talk about, um, you know, what's my purpose? And then they talk about, like, leaving a legacy. Yeah. And I feel like, from what you're telling me, Mark is living out his legacy through your artwork. It's crazy how you're saying that. The last thing that I said to my brother before he passed was about his legacy and that I swore I would honor that. And I didn't know at the time how, and I didn't know anything of where I would be today. And his legacy is honored in every single thing that I do. Like I don't have regrets today. I live in the moment, I, you know, I try to plan for the future as best as I can, but, but how precious and unpredictable life is, I never understood. I heard, you know, people talk about it and it's easy to say, but for my brother who was surfing through the winter, you know, he was at every concert of every band, he was a mastering artist, so he did a lot of work, he was at the Grammys, he was like a cool guy. And he was healthy, you know, he took care of himself, but he didn't have regrets. And he always went for the wave. He always went to the concert, no matter what, you know, he didn't miss anything. And I definitely live that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too many people are, um, I, I hear a lot of people, I have to plan for the future. I have to plan for the future. And it's like, okay. Yeah, it, you do have to plan mm -hmm. for the future, per se. But what about right now? Yeah. Like you, ha like becoming truly happy um, in this moment is really what will prepare you for the future. Yeah, yeah, and you know, um, with loss, and I had never been. I had never experienced grief and loss before you know, like this. And um, the, the description of happiness just changes. So it's like I'm living this life of painting all the time and people love my art and they want to talk to me and learn my story and, and buy seashells from me, all these things. that it, It's amazing. And so many people are proud of me and helping me and supporting me. And I'm happy, you know, yeah. but I think that the people that have experienced the pain that I have in my heart, it's not ever the type of happiness that I would expect or be able to compare because I always have that grief, but I'm able to use it in a way that's beautiful, yeah. you know, and like people can hear my story and relate. Um, the amount of memorial pieces that I do, it's... It, it like breaks my heart, but it's the biggest honor that I could ever have when someone's like, you know, somebody passed and can you make this show for their family? And, and I've made countless memorial pieces that are so special to everybody who have them. 
And yeah. each shell has like such a unique story. Absolutely. And yeah. we'll take a little <laughs> tour of your yeah. your um your shop here in a mm -hmm. minute. Um but yeah, I feel like I feel like um people get stuck on what happiness really is. Yeah. And there there really is um two different types of happiness. There's relative happiness and then there's absolute happiness. And whether you, you know, um, believe in God or whatever your beliefs are, every single belief comes down to one thing that, that God or Buddha or Zen wants you to become absolutely happy. Mm. Absolute happiness. There's relative happiness is, oh, I, I got an A on my test. Mm -hmm. And then that only lasts for a little while because you have to strive to get another A. Right. Whereas when you're, when you're absolutely happy, you're happy inside, you're happy in your heart. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to, to define it because of the situations that happen and come our way. So it's like, that as I'm listening to you, it's, it's like the, a sense of peace almost. It's having yeah. peace inside and, and things come at me that I can expect, that I can't expect, and being okay with who I am and the decisions that I make and how I live my life, I think can define some of that and how I treat other people. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's a whole yeah, you know, well, category. It, gives, of, it also gives you perspective. Well, so that, that's one of my favorite words, perspective. It's, it gives you perspective on what am, what am I really here for? Well, and that changes as these turns happen in life, you know, my perspective. And as an artist, my whole life revolves around perspective of how I see something and how somebody wants something to be portrayed and how I can create that, um, how I live my life and, and then perspective of, of other people and, and just the interaction of it all. You know, yeah. I've met a lot yeah. of people through doing what I do. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think it um, having an experience like that um, it 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 sheds judgment. Like judgment doesn't um, yeah. have a place anymore. Right. Um, you know, it's a lot Definitely. of a lot of. Uh... So tell us what you're painting right now. And, yeah, uh, I mean, so, you know, and, and a lot of people always ask, like, how long does it take to, to paint a shell and all about the process? And it's come to the point where I, I never am working on one thing, ever. Right. Um, I have usually about 20 pieces going at once, and I'll work across, and depending on when things are needed by or what holiday it is mm -hmm. or what event I have. Uh, so right now I'm doing some custom work on some tributes and family pieces and then I'm also working on some Valentine's Day pieces okay. uh, and I also have some favorites that I like to do uh, some teacher shells for teacher appreciation and <laughs> things okay. like that very cool um, yeah so I'm yeah. working on some lovebirds now I have an event this weekend show so every, show everybody uh... I love birds so okay. yeah I'm a big um fan of working in layers. I work with acrylic paint so it dries fairly quick. Okay. And so this right now is is towards the finished part and it's got maybe a, another like 20 minutes to really okay. It's like my favorite part because it all just pops out once you put those finishes on them. So, yeah. And then I have a a family shell that I'm doing that's just uh you know, in their backyard. So this needs a little bit more on with the wood grain and I'll put some fencing on, things like that. And I do some overlaying where I'll take my customer's images and I have a special process that I've created. Makes it pretty cool, which you'll see when you scan okay. around of the ones that have people on them. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. So rapid fire. Okay. Um, What's your favorite shell to paint? Oh God, my favorite shell. Like big, small. Oh, size. Okay, big. I like to paint 
The big shells, I think they were really exciting. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> um, what was the hardest project you've worked on? Um, anything with architecture is pretty tough. I did the Qu uh, Quebec Castle. That one was challenging. Oh, wow. Getting mm -hmm. all the detail out yep. of it. Okay. Favorite, favorite color to paint in or favorite color? Um... Oh, that's so hard. Purple. Purple. Okay. <laughs> that's like an impossible <laughs> question for me. <laughs> favorite band? Beatles. Beatles. Okay. And Don't ask me favorite Beatle. <laughs> I can't okay. say. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. That's good. And favorite favorite thing to do besides art? Be with my family. Okay. Usually at the beach. <laughs> so be with your family at the beach. Yeah. Very cool. You know, this is um, Marnie. I want to thank you for inviting me over. Thank you. Your little studio thank here. Thank you so much. You have quite the yeah. setup. Um, yeah. Thank you so that's much. It. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I love. What you're doing in Smithtown. How can and people um, order? Yeah, so or find you and tell us, tell us. Absolutely, all the, thank you. I, yeah. um, so I'm really active on social media, um, Instagram and Facebook. I keep up with regularly Art by Marnie B on both. I do have my website, artbymarniebee.com, and I post all of my upcoming events. So I go all over Long Island from North Fork to Long Beach to Port Washington. Here in Smithtown, I do events as often as I can. And um, yeah, you can order. I ship all over the country. And So they just message you on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Just shoot me a message or you can email me through my website. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you again. We'll see you soon. Yes. Right.